at Speaker's Corner on another Sunday. It's a little bit windy, but we do have Brother Andrew with us. And we just want to have a quick conversation on why Andrew is Christian. So we met a couple of weeks ago at Speaker's Corner. We did. Uh, why, first of all, why are you at Speaker's Corner? Um, I've seen a few, um, when doing study, the YouTube and different videos drew me to different videos of the what happens here and so I started to listen to more and more and then I thought what better way to spend the Lord's Day than trying to give people the word to just encourage other Christians and be around Christians. So it was all YouTube videos made you to um, come to Speaker's Corner and engage with people? Yes. Yes. Um, you are British? I am. You look very British. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, can I just say thank you very much for the uh, freedom of speech we can express in England and it's your country. So, thank you for that. Especially the freedom of speech we have at Speaker's Corner. Uh, so, I understand or I, I believe that none of us born as a Christian. There is a time and place as a Christians, we make a decision to follow our risen Lord Jesus Christ. So, you weren't born as a Christian. Were you born into the Christian family? Uh, I was. I uh, yes. I'd say my family was Christian, very loosely. Didn't go to church. Um, I went to a Sunday school as a very young child, but I would have called myself an atheist from a very young age. Okay. So. If you were atheist, by definition, you did, you did not believe in God, let alone risen Lord Jesus Christ. So what made you uh, to question atheism or what made you to um, accept Jesus as your savior? And when was that happened? I'm very, uh, it's a very strange story of me because I was not looking for Jesus. I was not looking for God. I wasn't ill. Nothing in my life was making me cry out to him. Um, but a friend that I had met when I was 26 through business, I knew he was a Christian. And he used to actually talk to me all the time and we'd have row after row where I didn't believe. Um, and then he passed away very suddenly. And when he passed away, I went to his church just out of a respect for him, no other reason. And I walked in and People said to me, are you a Christian? And I said, no, said I don't believe. Um, but even that was very strange to me because it was a different sort of idea of church. The only other church I'd been in was either Church of England or my wife was Catholic. So I'd been in Catholic churches. But this was just like entirely different. Uh, the pastor had a shirt and tie on. There was nothing all night other than one cross, um, and that was it really so that itself was a shock to me and so while you so there are there are lots of church traditions and the worship um, body of Christ does in the church it's all different from one church to other church there are very traditional church services also there are very free style church services um, and uh, by God's grace that you didn't want to hurt the feelings of your friend when he invited you to go to the church which you went. So, um, I think you might miss He died. Yeah. So he didn't invite me. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. I just. I so went you went to, to the funeral? To it was before the funeral. It was, it, I found out he was dead on the very next Sunday. I went to church just because I knew it meant so much to him. Yeah. Just made me feel better. So you wanted to honor your friend in a sense That's then? Right. Okay. Um, so. You know this church was very different than uh, the church you went as a child or the churches you attended before. But what was about the... Because we can't be Christian because we like the church style or the people in the church. What was in the church that made you to... Oh, let, I need to reflect on what I believe or why I believe. Well, I mean, as it says in the Bible, you come to God, I believe it's true, through hearing, hearing the word and prayer. And obviously, in today's society, it took about three or four weeks for his funeral. So the initial impotence in going, the initial reason I went was just to go to his funeral. I obviously came under the word of God. Uh, my church that I attend is a very sound, 
Bible-believing church. They don't um, water down the message. It's strong. So without even realising it, God's word was entering me. I also found out afterwards that the church was praying for me. So I suppose this is what kept me going. Um, so it, it tweaked my interest enough so that after the funeral was over, I kept on going. But like you said, it, it, it's a journey. I used to play golf every Sunday morning. So, so I would only ever go to the evening sur service. Okay. And um, over time, I thought, well, this is wrong. So what I started to do was get up very early to go golf till eventually I thought, no, this is wrong. And I stopped playing golf. But I suppose there was, there was a time I was attending Bible study and I thought I was a Christian. So I was calling myself a Christian, but I wasn't. It was all self-righteous. I was there because I was now, I thought I was a good person. I'm listening to the Bible, so I went. And the thing that, the ultimate thing for me was at a Bible study, a lady mentioned Jonah. And I was in my seat and I thought to myself at that day, don't tell me people still believe that rubbish. How can that be true? But then two weeks later, I was in exactly the same seat. Like I say, no effort, not trying. And I was overcome. And I felt sad. So I'd been in control of my life always, or I thought I had, but now I had to let go. Now I realised that everything was down to God and the Lord Jesus. And at that day, I suddenly said to myself, every word in the Bible is the word of God. Whether I understand it or not, it's the word of God. So that was the day that I believe I was born again when the Spirit entered me. And it was a complete turnaround. And from that day on, I realised that I was a sinner, that I needed to be saved, or somebody had to pay the price for my sins. Not just forgive me, but the price, the punishment for my sins had to be taken. And the longer I got into it, the more I learned, and the more I realised how much I need Jesus Christ. Um, so those of you uh, who doesn't know about the story of Jonah, um, it is actually very amazing. It gives us the heart of God as well as heart of man. Jonah is been picked up from people of God. God asked him to go to the uh, Nineveh. They are very, very um, nasty people. And um, the way they were dealing with human beings were like so scary. There are lots of historical evidence um, in British life, British Museum shows us how violent people they were. Of course, um, Jonah freaks out. He doesn't want to go. He ends up in the belly of fish. And then um, God puts him in Nineveh. When he goes to preach the message, people repent. And that breaks the heart of God because, uh, sorry, heart of Jonah, because Jonah knows those people are very nasty and he didn't want them to repent. But God steps in and then pours out his heart. He says, what I can do, those people who don't know what is their right and what is their left, how can I judge them? God pours down his grace because they hear the goodness of God. They hear the message of repentance and they worship, Lord, they worship God. I think that's just amazing story. So to me also, like you say, the story, to me as an atheist, it was just, how can anyone survive in a belly of a fish for three days and three nights? So it was just automatically. And part of my, my trip to being an atheist was the fact that the church basically started to teach that the Old Testament were just tales, to moral, they were stories, they weren't true. So that came from the Church of England and once you can say to yourself that the word of God isn't all true, that is that was the first knocking down of the brick wall. And then eventually you could start to think, well that isn't true and that isn't true, till eventually I totally left Christ, like I say, and I walked yeah. myself. One of the good things about Christian faith is we do have access to the Bibles when we sit in the church. And we are strongly encouraged to think critically as we read the Word of God. 
we are strongly encouraged to ask questions and then get answers to the, our questions. So we read it, we ask questions, and then we say, why, how? And thanks God, his word is able to deal with all those things. Um, according, to, um, according to Christian scripture, Bible is from Genesis to Revelation, is identified as the inspired word of God. God speaks in Genesis, God speaks in Revelation. It is all tells us God's big plan and how human beings are involved in this God's plan. Um, I am sorry to hear that um, there are teachings out there talks about actually there are the stories in Old Testament, they are just myths, they are just tales because when we, like I, time to time I do British Museum tours on the um, helping Christians to be confident on the reliability of the Bible. There are historical evidence after historical evidence tells us Bible is not only word of God, but Bible is also reliable word of God. I personally now, I'm so interested in it. I, I, I still believe the way it came to me that I believed through faith and faith alone. But since then, like you say, you're asked, you ask questions, you, you come at a critical way. Yeah. And being an atheist for 51 years, basically, there's nothing an atheist can say that I haven't said. They're all words that I say. And, and to do the research and find out how factual it is and how true it is. You know, the Old Testament, I believe there's something like 2,000 prophecies within the Old Testament that just came true, not including the ones about Jesus. You know, there's 300 prophecies about Jesus Christ. So these, these are amazing proofs, amazing proofs. So you were at this for 51 years? Well, I was 51 when I came to church, so okay. probably 40 years, 45 wow. years I was an atheist. That's a very long time. Yeah. Um, so what does life look like to you? Uh, so how long have you been Christian now? I would you say You are over 51. Years. Okay. So um, what does the Christian life look like for you? How do you spend your week? What do you do? Well, like what are the changes yeah. you've done? So you still go to the golf? Yeah, my, my, not <laughs> so on a Sunday though. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I definitely, I'm, I believe uh, that a Sunday, to me, I, I, I might have some different, don't want to get into theology now, but I don't believe in the Sabbath, because um, I believe that was to the Jews. I believe Sabbath is a Saturday. It's never been changed in Scripture. But before the law, we have the creation story, and God taking a rest on his seventh day. So he's... He's put in one day as special. We know that Jesus was um, raised on the, um, the first day of the week, and we know that the disciples, early disciples, met. So the first day of the week has become a day that Christians use to, to come together yeah. and worship. So I just believe that that day, the best thing I can do is to keep it separate. Yeah. Now, keeping it separate means I won't sort of go shopping, I won't do the things that I would do on a normal day. Not, I wouldn't say I would never do it, but I'm saying I'd try and keep the day as special as I can. So obviously going golf with people that aren't Christians for a start, to me, I would never do that on the Lord's Day. I think it's it's a day to keep special. So that's 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 a big change in my life. Yeah, so Hebrews, Hebrews 4 explains us um, on the importance of Sabbath and implications of that. So um, so you change your lifestyle now, you change the structure. Uh, so how do you spend from Monday to Sunday? So Sundays you are worshipping God um, at church with the other believers as well as at speaker's corner yep. with uh, preaching the Christ crucified. Uh, what about other days? My life is I can't believe how much my life has changed. I'm also, I don't want to go too much detail, but I'm not very well either. But my, 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 that, my whole week, I, I'm, I don't know how we can explain it, but I, I live for God, that's it. So I, I don't even really watch much TV. I, I spend my time reading the Bible, doing research into Christ, just all different ways. I try and tell as many people as possible about Christ, um, but I do the normal things as well. 
Um, like I say, it's just there's so many things I don't understand. I thought that being a Christian would be tie you down. It would be almost like putting chains on yourself. Oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. But it's like the Bible teaches that the truth sets you free. And I feel now freer than I ever did when I was an atheist. You know, you're, you're constantly searching for something as an atheist. Um, I'd go out every weekend, I'd have a drink, meet girls, and I'd say to myself, I had a good time, but in the morning, that good time was over, it was gone. So what I'd have to do is do it again. So you're constantly, constantly trying to fill yourself up with these good feelings, and I believe that's why many people can be affected more in drugs and drink, and they're, they're craving something they can never find. But God, to me, it was like complete fulfillment. That day, that Friday that it happened, I was just completely full and I was free. So it's hard to imagine, although I would say now, I wouldn't swear, I wouldn't go out and get drunk. All these things that other people would say restrict you, to me is freedom. Yeah. You know, you don't realize how much a slave to sin you are. Yeah. And it is just a change. A lot of my friends were reasonably good friends, they weren't wicked or that, and I still have contact with them. But to be honest with you, I'm only ever truly at home in and around other Christians. You, to feel that they're your brothers and sisters is an understatement. I went, one of the first years I was a Christian, I went on a stag weekend in Wales. And like I say, it was with good people. So the weekend, apart from a lot of drinking they did, it involved things like uh, go-karting and canoeing and things like that. It wasn't things you associate as being wicked. And in the hotel we were staying in, there was a sign that said Evangelical Church. And we stayed there for about four days. And on the last day, which was a Sunday, I thought, well, there's no way I'm going to get from Wales to church. So I thought, I'm going to go to this church. Now, I've never been there in my life. I walked in the door, and when I left that church, I felt that I'd met another 40 or 50 brothers and sisters. One of them invited me back to his house for dinner. But it was a genuine connection. It's not yeah. made up. It's not fake. Yeah. You're just, you are their brothers and sisters. And if you meet a Bible-believing Christian, wherever they are, there's a connection. And that connection, of course, with God's our Father. Yeah, I think that's something I would strongly agree with you. Like, time to time I travel, like I met with people in Cameroon who I never met before in my life, but I felt I was at home with them. Yeah. I was able to tell them my struggles. We were able to sit down and pray together. Um, I met, I've got like sisters in Saudi Arabia we still communicate with one another and we pray for one another. Doesn't matter which part of the world we are, because we've got Christ common, and that's all we have. Therefore, our um, interaction with one another is always focused um, around Christ and centered Christ. That's, I think that's like uniqueness Christ offers. It's God's word. Yeah. See, to me, having the Church of England connection, my wife being a Catholic, and what I come across a lot, my mum especially, she calls herself a Christian, but if you read this mum, I'm sorry. She's self-righteous. She's only going to heaven because she's good. She thinks she's, she's earned her way. And what saddens me, especially with the Catholic people I know, is that we have the Word of God. Every person out there has the Word of God. And it's people died so that we'd have it in our language. And it, it's a shame that me, for the 50 years I didn't, that people don't read it. It's not complicated, it's not hard. They should pick it up and read it, because that is the Word of God. In churches, and I'm not saying churches are bad, but churches often have a lot of man-made things. And it, there's nothing wrong with tradition, as long as it doesn't go against the Word of God. And when you become a Bible-believing Christian and you meet other Bible-believing Christians, there's a bond that is inseparable that I would never have felt through other churches. And I do believe that, if anything else, that message to everyone is get a copy of the Bible, 
and read it. Yep. Nothing else, just read it. Don't worry about studying it. Don't worry, no one is a born again Christian the day they find Christ. No one. You can be homosexual, you can be um, Hindu, Muslim, you can be anything, atheist, doesn't matter who you are, everyone is welcome to Christ. And no one is born again of their own. I, I, I now, my life is different. I'm so different in so many ways, but none of it is my work. It's because I have strength, strength through Christ. And that comes through his word and through prayer. So all I can say to everyone out there, don't worry about how much you lack. Just get the Bible, attend a church that you know believes in the Bible, ask to be prayed for. And if your heart genuinely wants to know Christ, everything else will happen and he will change you. I mean, without being rude, I never thought I could live without sex. So to me, that was a big thing. Now I know, being a Christian, that I can never have sex unless I'm married. If I'd thought about day one, that might have put me off. Now, it was tough, but when I look back at it now, I don't even give it a second thought. And that's, that's God and Jesus, it's nothing else. I couldn't do that on my own. It's 100% them. I never ever play golf, like I say. And all the people I go <coughs> golf with, they can't believe, they don't understand it. We go on holiday together. And even when I'm on holiday, on a Sunday, I won't go golf. And they just can't understand that. Yeah. And I think to myself, what, what, how much God has done for us, and what do we give God? We give him so little, even, you know, we just give him so little. And to sacrifice a day to him is, is nothing. And I do believe, as the Bible says, that we need to we need to, to go without and carry our cross. We need to deny ourselves and carry our cross daily. And if we're not denying ourselves in some way, are we doing enough? And I do think we should always spend time with God every day. If we, there's no excuse. We all we all know we're not good enough and we all find an excuse. But the truth is there's no excuse. We watch TV, we read a newspaper, we do everything. Pick up his word. That's all I can say. Thank you. Um, out, of, out of grace, God loved mankind so much that he did something for mankind. He sent his only son, one and only son, to die on the cross for the sin of mankind. That has been done out of his grace. Whatever we do today, we will never able to add something on it or we will never able to take something from it. It is done once for all and the scripture is very clear. God's desire is for human beings to spend eternity with him. And God picked you four years ago and then said, Andrew, you are the one and this is the time now I want you to come and follow me. You respond to his grace. Yes, we can't add anything on God's grace, but all we can do is we must open our hands and then say, say, God, thank you that you've done everything for me once for all. Everything once for all. And it is amazing today, we, we do have many people at Speaker's Corner who don't know the grace of God yet. It is amazing that it's not only God picked you up where you were, and then touched you, changed you, and transformed you, and made something new out of you for the kingdom. And he also sent you here where we have lots of people who do not believe him. Not only they don't believe him, they also intentionally don't like him. So I am so grateful to our risen Lord that out of lots of people who could pick up someone else, but he looked at you and then he said, Andrew, I love you, I care for you, and I want you to be mine. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I believe now, I think, although I was an atheist, I, now, looking back, I felt God has been calling me for a long time. And I think part of me meeting this man, Michael, he was a very conservative, strict Christian. And if I was, as I would call his best friend, or one of his best friends, 
however far away from God I was, I was always walking in parallel with somebody else that was close to God. So I would be affected by him. So it meant I was somewhere within arm's reach. And I feel shame sometimes that it was his death, the final thing, that brought me close enough to hear God and to allow myself to be in a position to respond because I do believe that every person is given free will. And I think this is the greatest gift God has given us. And that is why when you know the truth, you are free because yes, I don't swear, yes, I don't drink, but I choose not to do those through the strength of God. So it's a free will, I'm free not to do those things. And God's free will also means that many people reject him. But what a glorious day it is when through your free will you accept him. And we know that God works and we know it's grace. I know that without God I would be nothing. It's only his strength. He's given me a new heart. He's changed my outlook in so many ways. Not, not just, just, just different ways. The way I, I drive my car, the way I communicate with other people, the time I have for other people, to, to, to listen to them, to, to try and understand them. The worst thing about being a Christian, I'm getting used to it, but after being saved was, oh, I'm going to go and tell someone, and I'm going to save them, I'm going to tell them. And you think you can bottle it up and give it to people, and you can't. We know now, or I know now, that all I can do is prepare the ground, sow the seeds, maybe water the seeds, but that final increase, that final thing, is that gift of grace from God. And I pray that people can be in a position like I was to respond and just to accept God into your life. And once you've done that, it is hard work. It's not, my church is very good at this. You're not going to suddenly, everything's going to be perfect. You're, you're given trials, you're given temptations. Life is constantly a battle. If you talk of Christ, people will criticise you. People snigger behind your back. You, you, you get this from every direction, so you have to be strong. To me, I, I think of it like wearing, a, pass, uh, wearing a, a parachute. It's really uncomfortable, but I'm wearing God. You know, if I know of God and the parachute's in the corner, I know that you can save me. I understand all that, and the plane crashes. That's no good to me. So I can't just know about Christ. I can't just think of him like that. I have to put Christ on. I have to wear him. And let's face it, what better, the more scripture you know, the assurance that you're given. I know that no man can take me away from God. I know the devil can't take me away from God. I know nothing can take me away from God apart from myself. I have to keep reading the scripture. I have to keep, keep his word. I have to put that effort in. But um, if something goes wrong, and if I do sin, if I do backslide, I can't blame the devil, I can't blame another person. It would be me giving the strength to the devil. You know, we've got to stand when, when we have doubt. Pick up the word, read it. God will give you that answer. Be around other Christians. People will say things and you don't even know, but that means so much to you. They've just said something that will combine with something you've read or something you've done. If you listen, God talks to you all the time. I, 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 all my prayers are his blessings. I feel his blessings daily. But not only the blessings that I see, the blessings I don't see. And he is an amazing man. Well, man. God. Man on the earth. God in heaven. He is, he is, I don't want to be little. He's everything. You know, we talk about God Almighty. That's what he is. It's God Almighty. There's nothing beyond him. Nothing. It's just... It's, it's a state of bliss that I can't ever imagine getting in any other way. If, if, if I love cars, I can have two cars. If I love Porsches, I can have three Porsches. Money. You know, how many people do we know, stars, sports stars, but they're never happy with the money. If, you know, I think to myself now, all these footballers, if at the age of 16 someone said to them, I'm giving you 100 grand a week, you're going to pay your tax, are you going to be happy? At 16, they'd say, yes, yes, yes. 
but they're not, are they? They want more and more and more. They want to avoid tax. They want to do all these things, and it's because they love the money. And I'm afraid to say, money is something we need. We require it, but that's it. It's what we need, and money can't make you happy. I, I can promise everyone that. And if you get money from ways that aren't honest, it does you no good. You know. Anything you get in this life, you have to work for. And that includes satisfaction, it includes reading the Bible. It's not going to happen overnight. I believe the Holy Spirit, it tells us in the Bible we can quench the Spirit. I believe that every day of our life, the Spirit diminishes a little bit on its own. And what do we do? Read the Word, it ignites. Prayer, it ignites. Fellowship with other Christians, it ignites. So it's in our control. People say to me, oh, I wish I had more of the spirit. But they can't, in my opinion, anyone, work at it, pray to God, ask for the spirit. But remember, to those that much is given, much is also expected. So you can't have everything. If you have much spirit, you have to keep working, you have to keep giving, you have to give the word. My personal fear, this is a worldly way, I know this isn't true, but I imagine myself in the queue when I'm dead to go into heaven and the person at the gate is asking the people with questions and the person in front of me, they say, I never knew God and I think, well, I knew that person. How sad it would be that somebody I know, I haven't told. Now I know most people won't listen, but that's how I feel. We know that the only way to heaven is to be born again. So people think when we criticise sin, especially homosexuality, it seems to be this big thing against you. But it's love. All it is is saying to that person, if you've got Christ, you can go to heaven. That's all you need. So I've got to tell you, if you were gonna fall down a pit or your house is on fire, I'd have to tell you, it's love. That's why I do tell people. And I wish people had told me, I wish I'd listened more. And thank you for doing that. So, if we do not tell, people won't hear. Amen. If we don't invite, people won't come. Lord Jesus Christ has given us invitation. We receive that invitation. Therefore, today we are belong to him. When we met him, we fall in love with him. We fall in love with Lord Jesus Christ. and. We do things because out of love we love him. We want to get to know him. We want to learn more about him, learn more about his word, so that we can be the people who are changed and transformed through that love and grace. And I'm grateful that there was a time and place someone stepped in. There was a time and place you said yes to the grace of God, and still you are in continuing journey where you are going to fall in love with both Jesus Christ again and again and again. And my prayer is that as you learn to, as you learn to receive the grace of God, as you learn to see the amazing love He has for you, He will put more passion in you so that you can express that to those people who don't know that yet. And please, those of you who are watching, please pray for Andrew as he grows in his relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. He will be able and he will be more confident to express that love to those who don't know him yet. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks for and making time. The, and the only thing us. I'd like to say is to anyone out there that all thanks is to God. Yeah. Nothing of it is from man, from me. It's all thanks to God. Yeah. Thank, you Thank you. Thank you, brother.